In the late 15th century, 1476 to be exact, a young sailor, a sailor by the name of Christopher Columbus, was shipwrecked off the coast of Lisbon, Portugal. And today I'm in Porto, Portugal. And if you've been following my channel, you know my channel's about the Spanish-speaking world and showing the parallels between the Iberian Peninsula, the old world of Europe, and the new world of the Americas, and what it is today. And you might think, what does Portugal have to do with the Spanish-speaking world? They speak Portuguese here, right? Well, it's actually to the benefit of Christopher Columbus that he almost drowned that day in 1476 because he would spend the next 10 or so years living in Portugal, learning from the country that was far superior in naval techniques, navigation, astronomy, mathematics, and he would study and learn from people like Henry the Great Navigator. He would marry a Portuguese woman trying to get closer to King John II. Why? So he could convince King John II to fund his travels to explore the New World. Well, King John II, he didn't believe it. He thought it was impossible. And in fact, that might have been Portugal's biggest mistake. Because thereafter, Christopher Columbus went to King Ferdinand and Isabella of the new United Kingdom of Spain, fresh off reconquest. And he was granted funding to explore the New World. You can only imagine what would have happened if King John II had approved of Christopher Columbus' outlandish proposal at the time, in retrospect, and what the world would be like today if that happened. Well, we have a lot to learn from both Portugal and Spain because they're both on the Iberian Peninsula. They both share a lot of history, yet they maintain a lot of differences. So I thought it would be cool to come to Porto, Portugal, do a city tour, on the banks of the Duero River and explore. Tell you a little bit about the history, how Portugal connected to the ocean, made it superior in the times of exploration, and how ultimately King John II not granting Columbus the approval, well, allowed Spain to become one of the greatest empires of all time. Join me, Porto, Portugal, as I stand on top of the pedestrian bridge created by the same architect that designed the Eiffel Tower. And so Columbus went off with his three little ships from Palos de la Frontera, Spain. He discovered the Caribbean and the islands that existed, the native people, and he came back on that voyage. He had a dock in Lisbon where King John II discovered that he had discovered the undiscoverable, and he was mad. He said, if you discover that to the west of the Canary Islands, well, that should be ours, right? And so there was a lot of discussion. They had to call in the Pope at the time, who was biased, and they created what was called the Treaty of Tordesillas. And that granted Spain the right to the lands 270 leagues west of continental Europe, and therefore it gave Spain the upper hand to the New World, because at the time, Portugal was concerned with exploring Africa, they had the Azores Islands, they were superior at the time, but the 16th century would paint a different picture. Wow, just check out this. This is incredible. Wow, the sun's going down here. Now once Portuguese was able to establish independence, they were able to focus on exploration, the age of exploration, by using these ships, these caravels with the triangular sails that allowed them to navigate swiftly in a zigzag motion. And Prince Henry, the navigator, he funded explorers to go down off the coast of West Africa and further south to establish a trade route to the Indies. Many sailors from Portugal, with their superior techniques and navigational skills and technology, were able to reach the Indies and establish a trade route and form colonies in Africa like Angola, Mozambique. But it was their focus on that that inspired someone like Christopher Columbus to search a different route to the Indies, a westward way, almost the unthinkable. And so you only can imagine if King John II had granted the funding that Columbus wanted from Portugal. He wanted to sail for Portugal. And what would have happened to the world? In history, everything happens for a reason. But the question of what if, it always leaves me wondering. And that's one of the reasons I love history. And so if, if you were to look at the line 
that divided the land for Spain to the west and the Treaty of Tordesillas and the land to the east for Portugal, you would see that it falls in modern day Brazil. And of course, Portugal went on to colonize Brazil, which became the largest country in Latin America. Over 200 million people today and the largest diaspora of Portuguese speakers. But Spain went on to having basically all of Western South America, the Caribbean, Central America, and parts of North America. The problem was is that Portugal was more focused on their colonies in Africa, Angola, Mozambique, and monopolizing that trade route to the Chinese, to the Indies, and we'll see a lot of these blue tiles in these Portuguese buildings that came from their connection to China. As I walk here along the banks of the River Duaro, I often reflect on what the world would have been like if King John II had granted the funding for Christopher Columbus to explore the New World. Would everybody in the South American and Central American and perhaps even the North American continent speak Portuguese? Where would Spanish as a global language stand today? It's full of what ifs, you know, we can never know, but just to think about it. And eventually as I travel and go back to the Americas, I'm gonna try to answer that question and further explore the parallels between Europe and the new world of the Americas. The Americas have a very, very short history compared to Europe. And in order to understand that short history, we have to understand the history before us.